What's up guys, Kaisen again and welcome back to the second episode of our Path of Exile Let's Play slash tutorial. Um, as you can see in town right now, uh, these are some of the aesthetic upgrades that I was talking about. This headpiece for example here, or this, I don't know how to call it, but this one here, or this weapon effect right here. Um, I think there's a pet somewhere here as well. So all these gimmicks that you can see, um, those you can buy with real money. Uh, there's one thing from the last episode uh, that I wanted to mention because I forgot it. Um, the build that I'm doing and also um, a link to the Path of Exile website and the Path of Exile wiki uh, are in the description below. Uh, if you're interested in what the build looks like, uh, interested about the game overall, and also, if, if you're interested in, you know, inform specific information uh, about certain things um, regarding the game, then those are great, um, great resources. So, looking at what we found when we killed Hillock, uh, we can now have a closer look at items and what, what differences there are between uh, certain items. The first thing that we we notice is that um, oh we actually oh we do have okay so we have mostly white items and we have one blue item which is a magic item you're obviously used from other uh, action RPGs that there's uh, white items there's magic items there's rare items there's unique items it's that is exactly the same in Path of Exile um, so this rare item that we found an amulet has to be identified and we will do this uh, I want to mention though that before you use your wisdom scrolls if this is a new leak or you're you're starting out completely completely new on this on on an account the first thing that you should do when you get to town is you should go to Nessa and you should uh, purchase items and have a look at the coral rings that she offers. You can see that some of them are already um, magic items. And you can buy a variety of items here. You can buy um, sashes and, and belts that you can use. You can buy wands, flasks, and rings and amulets as well. Um, and you can also exchange or trade certain currency items. We'll get to that later. Um, but the important thing for now is that you have a look at the rings and you go for the highest white one. The coral rings have a range from 20 to maximum life up to 30. So a 28 is really good so I'm just gonna go and buy this one and this costs uh, three scrolls of wisdom so that's why I'm saying um, if you don't find an additional scroll of wisdom this is a higher priority to buy this so I spend them and now I can use this ring and equip it and you will see that my life goes from 57 to 85 does make a lot of sense and now I still have one wisdom scroll left and I can use this wisdom scroll right click the wisdom scroll and then left click the item and that's how I identify it so I have a mana regeneration is the base stat on this power amulet and because it is a magic item it has another stat on it which is 8% to lightning resistance um, as I said before when we found this orb of augmentation uh, magic items can have two stats on them one is the so-called prefix and the other one is a suffix lightning resistance is a suffix so I could get a prefix on this item um, for example um, 20 this one here the the 28 to maximum life on another item or on a regular item is a prefix so I could use this on this one if I would deem it um, if, if I would think that it, it's a good idea to do so. In this case, I don't really think it's a good idea because this lightning resistance roll is relatively low. So I don't want to spend it. I want to save it for something uh, where it's more worthwhile. I can still equip it though because um, we don't have anything in the slot right now. 
We also want to equip that fire gem or the, the fire trap gem. And luckily enough, we found the plate vest, so we have an empty gem slot. And now, uh, one more thing that we can look at in terms of items that we already found is that um, if you look at this item, there's three sockets and they're all they're not connected to each other and then we have these two items here where we have two sockets and there's a link between them this link between sockets is actually quite important uh, because if you have a skill let's say like burning arrow you could put your burning arrow skill in here and you could get a so-called support gem um, to enhance or alter this this skill um, so for example for my burning arrow I could get a support gem that blinds enemies when I hit them or I could get a support gem that increases the amount of burning that I do when I hit an enemy there's tons of support gems and you can only affect the initial uh, the initial skill in this case burning arrow if the support gem is linked to the skill so if I would have let's say a red support gem and I would put it in here that doesn't do anything for for burning arrow because there's no link between the two so that's some basic uh, mechanics when it comes to items another thing to mention here is that if you open your character screen uh, you can see that you have a certain amount of strength and intelligence you have more dexterity obviously because you're a ranger and you already have we already found one item that requires 20 strength and because we only have 14 we we are not able to equip it not able to use it and as we continue leveling our character and progressing through the game we will find more and more items that um, have a certain level as well as uh, attribute requirement and some of them we will be unable to use so you have to from the start before you you make your build you have to make sure that whatever skills you want to use because at some point your skills will require this one will require dexterity for example because it is a green gem so you have to make sure that the requirements for the gems and items that you want to use uh, that you can fulfill them with the passive skill tree that you came up with and if we look at the passive skill tree again uh, for example you can see that here close to our start we have dexterity nodes and here we have like a bigger node where you can also get dexterity on it and then at uh, certain intervals on the tree you have nodes like this where you can get 30 strength from a node or 30 additional intelligence so uh, you have to take all of this into account to make sure that you can actually wear the items that you get and use the gems. So having said that, uh, let's take a look at our stash because this is the first time that we can access it. And as I said previously, we have four stash tabs initially and we could add a new tab which opens um, the shop. And this is where you can spend your, uh, your, your real money um, if you want to have more stash tabs but for this tutorial I'm going to show you guys that four stash tabs are plenty and uh, we can go all the way with those um, so what I could do is just get all my items and put them in here and stash them but since I'm not planning on using any of these items uh, at any point of the game I will just go to one of the vendors there's Nessa and Tarley in this Still town alive, and I will say sell items and just put them all in here and what you can see now is that for a normal white item you there's no gold in the game so what you get is a scroll fragment so if I put four in I get four scroll fragment and you can stack those up until five once you have five scroll fragments you will get a scroll of wisdom and here that's let's click H you can see here that there's certain achievements that we can fulfill in the game uh, and also challenges which change with every challenge league and this was one of the vendor recipes for scroll fragments that we just fulfilled 
um, you will see a lot of the a lot more of those coming up. So what I will do is just throw these two in here. And um, one more thing in town is the notice board, where you can. This is basically your social your social tab, where you have friends, guilds, and your current party, uh, if you are in one. And you can also look at public parties where uh, other people, for example, here we have level four and level seven. They're running together in a group, so you could join that group and level with them. Um, in this tutorial, um, we will be playing solo, and we will actually try to play uh, self-found, um, self-found gear as much as possible. I will have to buy some some skill gems because. I cannot get all of the skill gems that I need for this build uh, on the ranger. But apart from that, we'll try to uh, only use our own gear. Um, that should only uh, sh that should as well show you guys that uh, you don't you don't need to have incredible wealth to beat the game. You just have to keep playing and and try to find uh, find some items and, and get the right drops. So yeah, this is all about the town. So now the coast is the next area and we'll go into the coast and continue. So here we are in the coast. Um, if you click tab, uh, here we go. Well, you can barely see the map right here, um, but you get a description here as well that we are in normal difficulty. There's three different uh, difficulty levels in Path of Exile right now. You can see the monster level, which um, you should usually check that your level is not too far ahead or um, or below the monster level because um, let's just say I would be level 10 in a in a level 2 zone I would get almost no XP so the experience and how much experience you gain from the monsters you kill depends on your level so you should try to stay close to the monster level in that zone uh, Torment League is the challenge league that I'm in, and permanent allocation, we already talked about that as well. So, um, I equipped Fire Trap. Now, I can leave it on middle mouse button, but that's a bit inconvenient, so I will just put it on Q and use it on Q and get rid of it here. And now I will actually switch to move only here, as I said before. Uh, it's just uh, it's convenient for me. Um, and one more thing from now on. Uh, as I walk through the zones, uh, I will not show you guys the whole gameplay. Uh, what I will do instead is, if I encounter uh, the new types of monsters in the zones, if I have specific drops, um, I will show you. So there will be quite a few cuts. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of all, all the boring running around in an area, so you guys only see the important parts. Alright, here we go and cut. Alright, so here we have the first monster type in this zone, a Withered Husk, an Undead, same exact attacks as the Drowned that we saw before, so there's nothing special about those guys. Uh, oh, I don't have my... <laughs> I wanted to use the uh, normal attack, but I don't have that anymore. So there's nothing special about those guys, I'll just keep going. Okay, and here I drew uh, another type of monster in this zone, a cannibal. Um, those guys have both a melee attack where they just club you, and they also have a ranged attack. Um, some of them have uh, exactly the same skill as I have, fire trap, so they just throw a fire trap at you. We can actually use fire trap right now so you guys can see what it does. If I throw it right there you can see that it has to be triggered by somebody running over it and once it is triggered it deals damage over time so you want to you want to keep your uh, the monsters in that zone so I'm just gonna run over here and I throw it right there and now it's triggered and they run in and die so that's that's basically how this skill works and yeah if you if you can keep them in this zone um, it's it's nice damage over time, so it's it's a pretty cool skill. You can see the fire trap that I was talking about. This guy was just throwing it, and uh, we're not really we won't really fight those dudes. I'm just gonna grab whatever I can here and just run away. Um, 
as a new player you don't necessarily uh, have to do this because it's somewhat dangerous but uh, I mostly oh alchemy okay I have to say something about this in a second um, that's a really lucky drop actually I usually just run through this area the same way that uh, I ran through the first one um, well mm, well I, I wanna I wanna show all the enemies in the zone so I kinda have to do it a bit differently let's just let's kill the monsters here let's use our traps um, by the way traps are usually you have three traps and once you used your, uh, your three um, that's a level up nice a once you used your three traps you have to wait until they recharge. You can see that it kind of recharges right there. So we're just using this here, dealing some damage. I could use my bow as well if I wanted to, but I honestly prefer the fire trap. So we get a lot of drops here. Let's just pick up the gloves because I don't think we had... Nope, we didn't have any yet. Um, so now we got our first skill point and by pressing just want to be safe and get rid of those monsters. Okay, okay, that should do it. Um, if we press P uh, and go into the passive skill tree, we can allocate the first one here. In my case, I will go for evasion rating and life. Um, I will talk about evasion and armor uh, a bit later on. And this is a magic item, but it's not really necessary. We don't really have to pick it up. Uh, here you can see that we found a chest piece with two green sockets. And it's uh, this is 14 armor, this is 21 evasion. You can somewhat equate armor and evasion in terms of uh, the numbers. So this one is a bit better in this case. So we're just going to use this. Um, now, I want to say something about the Orb of Alchemy that we just found. Um, this is actually a um, relatively rare orb already, so we're really lucky in, in what we find at the start of the game. Uh, this one upgrades a normal item, which a white item is considered normal, to a rare item. So I could, if I wanted to, um, use any of my white items here and and use this Orb of Alchemy on them to get a rare item. And a rare item can have up to um, six attributes on it. So it could be, for example, it could have um, it could have life on it, it could have some sort of uh, damage on it, or evasion, or uh, increased armor. There's, there's a lot of um, different, uh, different things that, that it can get. Um, but you always, because it is a relatively rare orb, you have to make sure that you use it wisely and you use it in, in a situation where um, you, you can make the most out of it. So right now, I don't really think that any of these items is worth uh, alking. So I'm just going to leave it and continue. Um, as we are probably relatively close to it, I was thinking of uh, just you know skipping to the next area, but then I remembered that there is, if we go up here, um, there is a special enemy. Oh, here you go. You can already see it. Uh, what you see is a skill called Firestorm, and this special uh, enemy is the the boss of this of this zone. You always have bone uh, zone bosses, and you can see in the middle there, uh, Fire Fury. That's the name right there. Special color. So we're just gonna kill everything around, and we want to kill Fire Fury because the zone bosses usually have higher drop rates, so you get more items and better items from them. Obviously, without dying. Here we go. So we manage to kill her, and she goes down in flames. Um, Hillock was the first boss, and this is this is the second zone boss that we encountered. And one thing that you might have noticed while we were fighting her and the other mobs around is that uh, our gems leveled. So the skills that we use will level with us. Um, so right now we we had it at le uh, level one. 
we can now level it up to level 2 and you can see that it already requires um, us to have level 2 otherwise we can't level it same goes for fire trap and as you level your gems they get more powerful your damage increases so in most cases you should do it there are some exceptions to it um, when it comes to um, supporting them in terms of mana cost and also um, let's just level these up um, at a certain level they require attributes dexterity intelligence strength um, if you don't have enough strength for example to support the next level of that gem you either can't level it up at all or um, if you if you can manage to get more strength temporarily you you might be able to level it up but then if you switch your gear around and you lose some strength you cannot use it anymore so you have to be careful with that I'm just gonna pick up this one uh, another orb an orb of transmutation which upgrades a normal item to a magic item so this is basically the the little brother of the alchemy we found this one goes from normal to magic this one goes from normal to rare uh, so we don't really need this and we don't really need this we're just gonna leave that on the ground we want the all the currency that we find we want and we found our first rare item a rusted hatchet um, with the skills that we have right now we can't really use it but let's use a wisdom scroll on it anyway because I want to show you guys uh, what the rare item looks like oh somebody's attacking us okay bye bye um, so here you can see that it has more than two attributes so the rare item can have more attributes and in this case it's actually it's actually not bad the increased physical damage um, is a pretty nice roll and we have some additional fire damage so it's it's not too bad uh, what you should pick up let's kill this guy as well okay he did the same to me what you should pick up uh, especially at the start of the game are shoes magic shoes because you can identify them and you can potentially get movement speed on them which makes your character faster I'll pick this up as well and I think this should be all here so movement speed makes your character faster and it makes it way easier uh, to run through the zones and also to evade attacks from other monsters we got another skill point so we will allocate this one uh, actually here I want to get some more attack speed so we will get the 8% attack speed node here and all right let's make another cut so now I made it to the next zone this is the mud flats and we're gonna enter mud flats there is another zone called tidal island that we could potentially um, enter it as well but what you should do is you should first find the entrance to mud flats go in mud flats and get this waypoint this is the first waypoint of the game and this makes it easy for you to go back to town um, and in case you have to um, leave the game while in mud flats maybe because you're dying uh, you will always have uh, you don't have to run you know the previous area, area again you already have the waypoint and you can go straight to mud flats if you make your way back to town I would suggest um, if you have things that are relatively uh, expensive or relatively rare you should just drop them in your stash this is uh, especially true if you play hardcore because you don't want to have an orb of alchemy or something even more valuable on your character when you die um, in case you want to reroll a different character in the same league I could potentially you could potentially think about uh, identifying this one but since especially at the start of the game you will get um, better flasks very quickly mm -hmm. I tend to um, at first don't really identify any flasks so I'm just gonna sell it and here you can see uh, another um, vendor recipe I guess if you sell an unidentified magic item you will every single time you will get transmutation shards and it will be two of them for every single unidentified uh, magic item um, if you identify it then you get 
a different okay for, for example I can I can sell this one or I can let, let's let's sell this one first and you can see this was another uh, recipe if I go into sell again and I put this one in you can see that this time I get alteration shards so a different kind of shards and as you can probably guess from the name transmutation shards if you get 20 of them together you will get an orb of transmutation out of it alteration shards if you get 20 together you get an orb of alteration out of it which we haven't found yet and I will explain that one uh, when we get the first drop um, so it doesn't matter if it is a rare item or a magic item as long as it is identified um, you will in most cases get alteration shards out of it and the amount of alteration shards you get from the item varies depending on the stats that are on the item so 11 alteration shards is actually quite a lot um, I do not want to sell this at this point though so I'm just gonna cancel it I will just put it in my stash for now the same with the transportation shards and I will keep the wool shoes um, so I can identify them right away once I find another uh, wisdom scroll oh one more thing that I wanted to show you guys is that if you are really really low in wisdom scrolls and you have some items that you want to identify there is the possibility of going to Nessa or going to one of the vendors and trading in your orb of transmutation for four uh, scrolls of wisdom so that is a possibility since I, I don't really necessarily need them right now I'm not gonna do it but that's definitely an option that you have okay it's time for a confession here the build that I came up with uh, especially for a tutorial um, for beginners was not necessarily perfect because the main skill that I'm planning on using is this one here spectral throw uh, which is uh, a projectile attack and it throws a copy of your melee weapon and so that the melee weapon or like a, a copy of it flies and then returns to you uh, while spinning the whole time and in its path it strikes enemy uh, it's a really cool a really cool skill the only problem with it is that you only get it if you're a scion and as I told you guys you have to unlock especially on a, on a new account you have to unlock scion um, in game and that only happens around level 30 ish so yeah basically the main component of the build that I'm doing here requires a skill gem that you cannot get until uh, you get the scion at level 30 so that that was pretty pretty bad planning on my part uh, what I did to get this spectral throw gem was very simple I just uh, went into the the chat opened global chat and asked really nicely if somebody could just uh, give me a spectral throw gem usually if you want to get a gem um, people will try to sell it to you they want you know whatever currency um, they need at this point so they want to trade uh, since spectral throw is a level one gem so a really really low level gem um, I was able to get one for free and it, it shouldn't be a big problem for you guys to to do the same and to just ask nicely in in global chat and you will probably succeed uh, if I press enter here you can see some of the uh, conversation that I had with the guy that uh, basically um, traded it uh, to me um, in the end um, if I if you go into global chat um, you will join a random channel if you if you post you know if you say well maybe does somebody have spectral throw and, and can give it to me and nobody answers in that chat what you can do is go slash global and then go one for example and then you will switch to another channel this uh, is true for every single thing here so you can go slash trade and type in a number and you go into that trade channel so there's a lot of different channels and uh, just on the matter of, uh, of chats you have a local chat which is basically just the town here 
party chat should be self-explanatory. You can whisper people. So for example, I was whispering with that guy. Um, and you can you can talk to your guild. And there's something for, for Twitch as well, where you can respond. If you're in-game, which I think is pretty cool, and, and you're streaming, uh, you can just go on here and then just uh, type something in and it will show up on, on your uh, Twitch chat. So that's about the chat and again I'm, I'm sorry that my planning was not that great but you guys shouldn't have uh, big problems to get the Spectral Throw Gem and since I now have it I'll put it on my gear right away and what I will do is I will uh, put Spectral Throw here uh, one thing that you will notice is that it is grayed out and it says skilled can't be used because um, a lot of skills have certain requirements for uh, a weapon uh, that they can be used with and here it clearly states that it has to be a melee weapon so a bow does not count so I have to get rid of my bow and obviously the quiver as well and I can pick up the uh, hatchet that I saved and put this one in and now you can see I can use it so that's cool I will um, I don't really need burning arrow anymore but what I will do is just as long as I have open sockets um, and that's the same that you guys should do as long as you have open sockets you should always fill them up with uh, a gem of you know that particular color that you have lying around because when it comes to trading gems that you don't need, that you don't necessarily need yourself for the build that you're planning, um, higher level gems, if they're leveled, they're worth more. So you should always uh, try to level some gems um, because you can sell them for more afterwards. So in this case, I will just leave it in. Fire trap, I will just put on here. And I will put a spectral throw on here as well and get rid of this here. So my right mouse button and Q is spectral throw at this point. And one more thing that I can do here, if you click, uh, you can see that there's a 1 and a 2 here. If you click X, uh, you get to a, a second weapon slot. And this second weapon slot um, is sometimes used um, for people to maybe switch between ranged and melee. Although, in, in most cases, that doesn't really make sense. What most people use it for is just they put an additional weapon or additional two weapons in here to have more sockets. And with these additional sockets that you have, you can uh, level more gems. So that's that's the main reason for it. What little help I can so I will not you. use this quiver anymore, so I can just get rid of it. And now um, we have four here and one here. And if we combine them, you can see that we get that wisdom scroll and we can use that on our shoes now and we get uh, life and life regen on them which is definitely better than this because there's nothing on here so we will just exchange those and can sell the ones that we don't need anymore uh, as you progress through the game you will probably not really um, worry about selling white items anymore because what you get off it with the one um, fragment, the one scroll fragment, it's it's not really worth much. So you can you can just simply destroy it or or throw it away. Um, at this point, we do need some wisdom scrolls, so I will still sell them. Once once I get enough wisdom scrolls, we won't really care about that anymore. All right. So now that we spend a couple of minutes in town, actually more than a couple of minutes. Um, we can talk about another interesting feature of the game and that is uh, resetting of areas. If you um, are at a particular waypoint or at the start of an area, so let's let's uh, go for the waypoint first, uh, you can control click on mod flats and it will open an instance manager where you can create a new instance, um, in this case even if I just click on it, it will automatically create a new instance because there is no old instance to start with. If I go back to town and I click on it again, now you have the instance that I just created 
and it, it says specifically when it was created, what realm. Okay, so maybe there are different servers for different continents. And it says the time left before the instance closes. So if you leave an instance and in this case 15 minutes, um, I think for some area it is 8 minutes. Uh, it depends on how many exits the area has. I think if it's just a straight line, so basically one way in, one way out, it's roughly around 8 minutes. If it has side areas, then it is 15 minutes until it closes. So I could go and create a new one. Uh, and I don't have to go back to town to do that. They recently changed it so that I just have to go back to this waypoint and I can do it here as well and create another new one. And you can see, you know, if you continue to do this, it just, it stacks up. Uh, and this is one way where you can, uh, you, you can do one area over and over again if you think that it's, uh, it's necessary, maybe for leveling or maybe to get gear if you're stuck. Um, the same thing you can do here as well. If uh, you enter a new area, you can control click the entrance and you get the instance manager as well. Um, and you can create a new one. Since I was gone for a while, this the coast where we were before and where we fought uh, Fire Fury, for example, should be reset. And uh, now we're going back in. And if you if you press tab and get the map overlay, um, the zone that we're looking for is, I think, in pretty much... Oh, I saw something that we, we want to have a look at. Uh, you, you can see this area over here. Oh, and this is my skill. <laughs> okay, there's a lot to show right now. Um, this entrance over here is Tidal Island, the zone that I'm, I'm trying to get in. Um, and it is usually... Usually you just follow the shoreline and you get to it straight away. Um, there's one or two um, possibilities of this map being created, so the uh, the coast being created, where you would have to run a long while to get from the entrance from the mudflats to this part here. So if you encounter one where after running for uh, a short while not seeing it, you should just go back and create a new zone, because that's way easier. So uh, looking at my new skill, uh, I, what it basically does if I click it is it throws my weapon and then it kind of swirls around a bit and comes back to me. So that's pretty cool and the cool thing about it especially is that you can throw it and you can move and your weapon just follows you all the way. And you can throw here and you can kind of sidestep and it also follows you there. So you can, uh, you can influence um, what it hits and and you know how the damage is distributed and one thing that I saw over here before I go over um, I want to say something about it you see this right here okay this guy was already touched I'm not even sure if that tormented thing is still here this is a, a part of this challenge leak there are tormented spirits in this league and um, they appear uh, randomly uh, throughout areas and what they do is they once you get close they try to flee and your job is uh, you can either kill them straight away and get some loot off them if you can catch them because they're they're kind of quick and kind of evasive um, if they touch any monsters while they're fleeing they will enhance them in a sense they will give them certain uh, attributes. So in this case, you can see this is Warlord's Touch. I think this... I'm, I'm not so sure about the, the Torment attributes so far, um, but uh, there is a skill that is called Warlord's Mark, which usually gives you Leech. So it might be that uh, this guy has um, Life Leech. But again, I'm not sure about this. Um, so let, let's just kill him. And usually if they... Yeah, we get increased loot. So if if those tormented spirits um, uh, touch other mobs, or I think they can just um, what should we call it? They can possess, um, especially rare mobs. If they do, then uh, the loot that you get from those rare mobs is uh, drastically increased. So this is a first sash. It's increased physical damage, which right now is actually really good and you can see we 
Without it, we have 7.6 DPS, and with it, it's 8.4. Uh, so that's quite a significant increase. So let's see if that guy is still here. Oh, he is. Okay. So let's let's try and get him and kill him. I don't really care about the other uh, stuff here. I just want to kill this guy. And you can see he's just trying to run away and trying to run anywhere. And after a certain while, they disappear. So you kind of have to... Yeah, he's disappearing right there. Okay, so I didn't make it. Uh, especially at the start of the game, this is pretty hard um, to actually make it in time. Because they have have a bit of life. So I'm just going to kill all of the ones that this guy touched and that hopefully have increased loot drop right now. Um, do we need any of this? We definitely want the griefs, because as I said before, um, you should identify all of them to see if you get uh, movement speed. Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll just take all of them because I can sell those items and get transmutation shards. Um, especially at the start when you don't really have a lot of currency, it's not a bad idea to pick these up and just sell them at the vendor for some shards. Okay, we get another portal scroll right here. Yeah, you can you can really see that the ones that have this you know, this touch or this uh, possession, um, they drop quite a bit more loot and uh, also increase rarity. So, alright. That was the first tormented spirit we encountered and we were not able to kill it. But let's, let's head out into the tidal island. So here, uh, this one I'm not going to do with, with uh, a lot of cuts. Um, you can see there's drowned again. We already know those. Um, we're just gonna walk right past, and we have cannibals as well. So there's no new enemy types here. It's all the same. Oh, actually, not quite. There's a tide strider, and they have uh, cold damage. This is basically the first mob, uh, except for fire fury, which was a rare mob that uses an elemental damage. Uh, here we go. But they're not really dangerous, so you shouldn't have any problems with them. And now, what we're looking for in here is the rare mob of the zone, because this is where we're supposed to go uh, uh, from the quest that we got. It's find the medicine chest, and the medicine chest is in here. Okay, I don't have any mana left, as you can see. I used my, I used my charges, so now... I have to see that I somehow get some of them back. Oh, I want to pick this up. Our Spectral Throw leveled, so we're just gonna do this. Okay. Alright, how much more charges do I need? Come on. Okay. Now I can refill my mana and hopefully kill a few mobs to get some more mana back. Our Spectral Throw uses quite a lot of mana early on, so um, it's not really surprising that I run out of mana. I will actually change back to default attack here, just to make sure that I don't waste too much mana and I can pick up uh, some charges for my mana flask, uh, simply because once I fight the, the main guy in this area, uh, I will need my mana, and I want to kill him as fast as possible, so let's just kill everything here to get some some charges. So you can see it's almost back up to full. Okay. I know this is maybe boring to look at at this point. Um, Alright, so now he should be somewhere around here. This area is not really big. Um, yeah, this is it. Once you, on your mini-map, uh, or on your transparent map, once you see a ship, a stranded ship, you know that's that's where the guy is. And around this area, you should be a bit more careful. That's him, right there. Hail Rake. And he uses this. So this is a cold-based attack. Um, it's called Glacial Cascade. And at this point in the game, it actually hits quite hard. So, 
you want to make sure that uh, you have some mana, you can kill him relatively fast, and you also have your uh, health flask charges up so you can heal. Alright, we killed him, and we actually leveled, nice. And he drops the medicine chest, which is the first uh, quest item that we pick up here. Um, let's just pick up the blue stuff as well. And there's not much else for us here. Um, we can pick up the chain belt. Uh, a 20 is actually a perfect roll on this one. Since we're going uh, damage, we don't necessarily need it. I'm just going to pick it up and I will, I will say something about it later. So that's it for this area and I'll see you guys back in town. Alright, so since we're already at 45 minutes for this episode, I want to wrap this up relatively quickly. So I already divided these items in what we can sell and what I want to just shortly uh, comment on. So we brought the medicine Let's chest back and if we know. talk to Nessa, she will give us a choice between a medium life flask, uh, a magic one, a magic mana flask, or a quicksilver flask. Uh, in this scenario, you should always, and I stress it again, always, pick the Quicksilver Flask. So get that. Uh, I will talk about the Quicksilver in the next episode. I don't want to um, do it right now. And then you go to Bestel and you can choose from a variety of gems. And uh, just really shortly, Poison Arrow is another um, bow skill that uh, shoots a, a cloud, a poison cloud, so an AoE attack with the bow. Viper Strike is a melee attack where you attack with your weapon and uh, you basically you debuff the enemy and he takes chaos damage over time. Uh, double strike is uh, an attack, a fast attack with your melee weapon. You attack twice. Detonate dead is if you if you kill enemies or if you have uh, a summons and they die, you can detonate the corpses. Um, dual Strike is similar to Double Strike, but Dual Strike works with two weapons, so you attack with both your weapons, that's for dual wielding. And Cleave is an attack where you swing your weapon in an arc in front of you and uh, also you know, deal damage to multiple enemies. Um, for our purpose, we will actually uh, pick up Double Strike here. Uh, actually, let me double check. Yes, we will pick up Double Strike. And uh, the last thing we will do in this episode is we will go to Tarlay, he's just giving us the next quest, and we will sell the uh, magic items that we picked up and that we will not use. We will sell it all to the vendor, even uh, these two uh, helmets, because I don't want to invest um, my uh, one wisdom scroll that I have at this point in identifying this one, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, you can see we uh, we got some portal scrolls which basically just bring you back to town. We will ID the Greaves to see if we get movement speed, and we get movement speed, that's really nice. At this point, um, it is worthwhile because we will use those. Um, the life and, and life region on these is nice, but I want to have movement speed. So what I will do, I will use the Orb of Augmentation now to get a second property. Movement speed is a uh, suffix so we can get a prefix. Let's hope it's a good one. 10 to strength. Yeah, it's alright. It's not the greatest, but we can use it. And since we have equipped this now, you can see that our strength raises to 24. I'll just, I'll keep this in here for now. Um, and I will put this in here as well. I will equip double strike and actually put double strike on my right mouse button. Um, and we will talk about these in the next episode as well, because um, there's something a bit specific about those as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, and I hope I, I could uh, teach you something. Um, if you enjoyed it, please uh, leave the video a like, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'm always happy um, if uh, people support the, the channel. Um, that's it for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.